Welcome one and all to another 3D Fluff training video. Today we're going to be doing a crash course in Cinema 4D version 19. Uh, we will be skipping over everything that's not necessary and we're just going to concentrate on all the things which you absolutely need to know. So without any further ado, let's get going. The first thing then, let's get some navigation sorted out. If you go to the toolbar at the top of the window and you click on this blue cube, we just want something to look at and interact with whilst we're navigating. So navigation in cinema is generally used with the one, two, and three keys on your keyboard. So if you hold down number one on your keyboard and then click and drag your mouse, you should notice you can start panning around your 3D view. Uh, the same thing applies with number two and three. If you hold down number two, click and drag your mouse, you can zoom in and out on your project. And with number three, you can start rotating around. Now do just keep in mind, these commands are both sensitive as to where your mouse pointer is. If I hold down number two to zoom, and my mouse happens to be on the top right corner of this cube here, when I start zooming, that's where I'm going to end up. The same thing goes with the rotation. If I hold down number three to rotate, and my mouse is on the top left corner of this cube, this will be the pivot point. When I click and drag, you see a small little cross, and that will now be the pivot point of where everything spins around. So in a nutshell, hover your mouse above the part of the image you're interested in, and Cinema will zoom, rotate, and navigate based on whatever's underneath your mouse pointer. Um, when you do get lost, because keep in mind, this 3D world is more or less infinitely large. When you get lost, press H on your keyboard. H will frame everything that you have in your project, and allow you to see everything in your scene. Quite useful after you've imported any 3D models and they're incredibly large or incredibly small. Another bit of navigation you'll need will be the orthogonal views. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel or a middle click, click that middle button now. What you'll see is that cinema shows you your perspective view and then you have your top, front and side. Each of these views can all individually be navigated. So using one, two, and three, we can pan around, we can zoom in and out, and they will all allow you to navigate. If you want to expand any of these particular views so that they fill the entire screen, just hover your mouse above the view and middle click again. If you don't have a middle click, hello Mac users, uh, your alternatives are to either click these small little tiny icons in the corners over here, or you can use your F keys. F, one, two, three, four, and five will allow you to switch between your various views, with F5 being all four at once. So those are your general choices. Now, with that navigation out of the way, let's have a look at actually manipulating the objects. On the top left of your screen, we've got these three yellow icons. There is a fourth, but let's not worry about that one for now. These three are move, scale, and rotate. So keep in mind, when you're using your one, two, and three keys, this is you moving the camera around. When we use these icons up here, however, this is us manipulating the actual object itself. So let's say with the cross selected, this is our move tool. So long as you have an object highlighted with this orange glowing outside, uh, if you don't have this by the way, just click on the object. You are now free to move the object anywhere you like. You don't have to click on the arrows, you can just find a bit of blank space and then click and drag your mouse and the object will freely move around. If you do click on the arrows, this will restrict it to just one single specific direction. This is a bit like holding down shift in Photoshop or Illustrator and restricting your movement. And generally the same thing goes with the next two icons. The square one, this is our scale tool. Click and drag and Cinema will resize the object. There's no need to hold down shift to constrain proportions. Cinema will do this by default. So all you Photoshop users who are currently holding shift, let go of the keyboard, you don't need to hold that key. The third icon looks a little bit like a recycling logo. This is your rotation tool. With this, you can spin your objects around to face different directions. Uh, as ever, you can click and drag on these colored bands and this will allow you to spin the object in just one single axis. Um, do note this gray circle going around the outside. If you click inside the gray circle, 
but not on one of the coloured bands, so just find a bit of blank space. This will allow the object to freely tumble around in absolutely any direction. If, however, you click outside the grey circle, this will only allow the object to turn facing the camera. This is particularly useful when we're looking top down on the object and we just want it to turn around and change direction. So long as your mouse is outside this grey circle, you can turn it around facing the camera from above. If you did this with your mouse inside the grey circle, it would start tumbling around in changing direction. If you're a keyboard shortcut junkie, the shortcuts for these keys, up, these buttons up here, are E, R, and T. Although do note that the order of E, R, and T does not match the order of the buttons. So now we have that out of the way, we can generally manipulate our objects and we can start taking a look at some of these other areas of the software. So along this top toolbar, those are your three main buttons there. I will just say, for those who've been using the Adobe software for quite a few years, please do not assume that this arrow in a circle is your generic default tool. If you click on this, you're going to have activated a, a very special specific selection tool. If you're looking for cinema's generic mode, uh, trying to get out of some weird tool, just use the move tool. The move tool is considered cinema's default mode. Anyway, moving along this top toolbar, we're going to skip over a few bits because frankly, cinema has a lot of buttons most people are just not going to need when they're starting out. So let's just skip over all the stuff here. We're not going to worry about those. These clapper boards, these are the render buttons. Um, We'll get back to these properly a little bit later, but just so you're aware of what they are, these will convert your quick, rough, real-time 3D view into a fully rendered, high-quality image. Now, it's not going to look like much because we haven't added any materials or lights, but if we click this first clapperboard icon, this will replace our 3D view with a high-quality rendered image. But as I say, we haven't added any materials or lights, so it's not going to look particularly exciting just yet. These other two, we'll come back to these when we look at the render settings. If you want to get rid of this, by the way, just click and it should go away. So onto these colored icons over at the side. These are the interesting ones. These are the objects you can add into your project. So let's go through these. The first one, if you hold your mouse down on the icon, you will see there is a sub-menu with extra objects inside. These are the primitives. These are all the basic building blocks which allow you to create simple 3D models. Now, I'm not going to sit here going through every single one because I'm assuming you all passed nursery school and managed to get the, the round peg in the round hole and the square peg in the square hole. But I will show you one or two of those and just give you an idea about how they work. So, let's get rid of this cube. Let's select it and hit delete. And let's throw in something else. Let's go for a torus, just a fancy word for a donut. Let's add this. So here's our torus. Now, what you will see is we have this object in this list over on the right hand side. This whole area here is our object manager. This will list every single object we have in our scene. So as your project progresses and you start adding lights and cameras and other objects, they will all appear within this list. But for the time being, let's just delete those and go back to our torus. Underneath, if I select my torus, these are the attributes. These are the settings for the object. If you ever can't see the settings you're looking for, just reselect the tool or re-click on the object you're interested in and Cinema will show you the settings for it down here in the corner. So first of all, we've got a few tabs along the top. This torus has a few various different uh, a few, a few different categories of settings. Just to save you some time, the first two tabs are not going to be that interesting. The first page just lets you rename it and hide it, but to be honest, we can already do that up in our object list. Uh, if you do want to rename an object, double click the object name, and then feel free to type in what you like. And if you'd like to hide something, well, you can see there's a green checkbox. If you turn this off, the object will disappear. So the first page doesn't have that much useful in there. And the same thing goes with the second page. These are the coordinates, where in 3D space the object sits. But you may notice this all looks rather similar to this, because in for the most part, they really are the same thing. 
They do have uses specifically for animation, but for now they don't really serve much of a purpose. So as a general hint, when you're looking to change the settings of an object, always go for the third tab. Well, that's all for now. This has been the first 10 minutes of the 3D Fluff Cinema 4D Crash Course introduction into Cinema 4D. If you'd like to see the rest of the video, click the link down below and you'll be taken to a page where you can buy the rest. 